everybody. Welcome to St Luke's. It is wonderful to have you all here. Thank you for being here to celebrate this very, very special day. Um, we have got friends joining us online from all over. Uh, we've got a couple of special friends. We're going to try something really, well, it's probably not that tricky, but for us it's a bit new. We're going to Zoom people in to an online, uh, on, online service. So we have got Father Tom joining us in Zoom land. Um, and also Elizabeth, one of the godparents in Zoomland. So uh, bear with us if we get a little bit clunky from time to time as we chop and change people in. My name's Jen, I'll be walking us through the service this morning. Um, if there are any questions as we go, please do not be afraid to ask. Okay, if, we, if, we have, uh, if there's something happens that you're not sure of, if this is a different style of church than you're used to coming to, and something happens that you're not sure of, please ask. I would hate you to walk out today and go, gee, I've got no idea why they did that. Okay? Because <laughs> I know I walked out of some different style of churches sometimes scratching my head. So, so please, please feel free. This is a, this, and for children, this is a safe zone. Okay? Children should be heard in church. A church without the sound of children is a dead or dying church. So to have children make noise is a joy to the Lord. So please. Okay? I have children. Um, and when your children get anywhere near the level of noise my kids got to in church, I will let you know. Okay? <laughs> Up until then, it's pretty fair game. So please don't worry if your kids are making noise. That is a joy to the Lord. Let's start in prayer. Heavenly Father, God of grace, we come together this morning to celebrate the gift of baptism, to welcome a new member of your kingdom, to pledge our commitment to you. Lord, be with us now as we sing, as we pray, as we worship. Lift our hearts and let us leave here full of light and joy and peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. We are going to start our service in song. We're going to sing a, song, a, a hymn called All Glory Be to Christ. It's to the tune of Old Anxiety. So you should be able to get this one. Okay? Please stand together and let's sing.
Thank you, everybody. What a beautiful way to start worship this morning. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please be, uh, we'll say together our sentence of the day from John 6. Jesus said, It is the Spirit that gives life, the flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. John 6 63. Please be seated. When our Lord Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, he commanded his disciples to preach the gospel to all nations and to baptise those who believe. They obeyed this command and we read the Apostle Peter preaching in these words, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you and to your children and to everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. We read here the promise of God to give forgiveness and his Holy Spirit to all who turn to Christ. The promise also embraces the children of God's people. The risen Jesus is willing to give blessing of eternal life to our children who we bring to him in faith. Children must then themselves express their faith in God when they're able to do so. So we are expecting Ellie back for that one. Today, Brent and Hannah and Britt and Tanya and Elizabeth online who already trust in Christ are going to be asked to make baptismal promises on behalf of Elise. And as parents and sponsors, guys, your role is to encourage her, to help her, to nurture her in her faith journey. So I'm going to ask of those people, are you willing to give her this help and encouragement by every means in your power? Thank you. So let's, let's pray together. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great goodness in calling us to know you and to put our trust in you. Increase this knowledge and strengthen our faith in your Holy Spirit to release, that she may be born again and made heir of everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like the little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such in my name welcomes me. So we confess our sins together, confident of God's forgiveness. So take a moment in your heart, bring your heart before God, and we'll say together the words on the screen. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us of our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we do our readings, we've got a few kids here. Kids, have you got any idea what we're doing today? Do you want to come down and talk about it? Come down, kids. Come down and talk to me. Come down and talk to me. Colin's going to get cross because I'm going to sit on the floor. Come down and talk to me. Come down. Come down and talk to me. Just before we do anything else, come down and talk to me. Hey, it is so good to see you all here. Now, tell me something. We're here for a special day, aren't we? We are? Yeah. So, what are we doing today? Any ideas? No ideas at all. You know, because you've been to a few of these, haven't you? Yeah. A baptism, and it's pretty special too, isn't it? 
It is very special. So what we're going to do in a little while, we're going to make some promises to God that this gorgeous girl, Elsie, is going to be, she's got an eyebrow. Um, she is going to be baptised. And then we're going to make promises that we're going to raise her to know and love Jesus every day of her life. It's really exciting, isn't it? Okay, now we just read something that said, um, if, you don't, it, if you don't become like a little child, like one of these, you can never enter the kingdom of God. What do we see with her? What do you see? Can she make her own breakfast yet? No. No. Can she change her own nappy yet? No. no. Can she go to work and make a living yet? No. no. What can she do? Who does all of that for her? Mum and, Mum and Dad. So what do we see in her that God might be pointing to? To be a child, what does it mean? Is she totally dependent on her mum and dad? Does she turn to her mum and dad for absolutely everything? No. She does, doesn't she? As we get older, we, we do our own thing, though, don't we? We try and be really independent. So what God is saying is if you can stay like this, if you can be totally dependent on him for everything, if you can trust him completely, she doesn't think she's going to get dropped right now, does she? No. If you can trust, if you can trust him completely, that is when you can enter the kingdom of God because that's when you are a true child of God. So as you guys grow up, you have to remember that when stuff gets tough, you turn to God. Don't try and fix it yourself. You turn to God. If you're not sure how to make a decision, you turn to God. Okay, and if you're not quite sure what God says, go find an adult who does. Okay? Can I pray for you? Heavenly Father, God of grace, thank you for these kids. Thank you for your promises to these children. Help us all, adults and children alike, learn to be, to, to be dependent and totally trust you that we may too enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Thanks, guys. Go on back to your seats. And I will get our readers up, if I may. So Psalm 84. Thank you. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage, as they pass through the valley of Barca and make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk in blameless is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, 
This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want me to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. pray as I get myself a little bit organised. Heavenly Father, as we come to explore your word this morning, soften our hearts, open our ears, that we too may hear your true living message. In the name of Christ. Amen. If you are a keen political observer, you would be seeing that Australian politics is hotting up again at the moment. As, uh, as COVID cases soar in various parts of our country and borders open and close, the, the opposition parties in New South Wales and Victoria and even on a federal level um, are starting to pounce on perceived weaknesses um, of, of their current leaders, of unpopular decisions. They're grumbling. They're spreading discontent. Even some of the people in in their own parties are nervously watching what's going on, watching plummeting public opinion polls uh, with fear of reprisal due to the tough decisions that are having to be made around the country in in the face of a global pandemic. The game of follow the leader in Australian political life appears to be one where followers only follow whilst the leader is saying or doing what the followers want them to say or do. That once it becomes no longer popular, or worse still, someone decides that they want to be the leader, the house of cards starts falling. The the writer of Ecclesiastes tells us that there's nothing new under the sun. These behaviours that we see in, in the Australian political life, the motivations behind them, have been around for a very long time. We see some of them in our passage for today. So if you're following along in John 6, we're going to work through some of that today. In fact, for the last three weeks, if you are following a lectionary reading for those online, we've been working through uh, the Gospel of John. John 6 in particular, where Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life of life. And today we turn to the reaction of those people who are hearing this. And we're going to be looking at the different reactions that people have had, the the, the difficult truth of the gospel and the choice that is before us, each and every one of us as followers, and the choice that Elsie will, will herself one day have to make. By the time we reach the end of chapter 6 of John, Jesus' disciples those who have been following his teaching, those in the crowd, are potentially numbered in around the tens of thousands. You've got to remember that immediately before this passage, Jesus has done the feeding of the 5,000. 5,000 men, right? Plus women and children. (laughs) So we don't count them in the the Bible. So, uh, So many of this number consider Jesus to be their teacher, their rabbi. And they would have actively supported him becoming king by force if necessary. Okay? Many of the religious leaders, the Jews, as John calls them, were grumbling. They were openly grumbling. That upstart Jesus, whose mother and father we know, how dare he 
How dare he say this stuff? They were grumbling, they were bickering, they were ridiculing, they were, they were doubting, they, 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 they were determined that this could not be true. They hated him. They hated him to the point where when we get into the next chapter, chapter 7, they want to kill him. But it was not just the religious elite who were grumbling. In verses 60 and 61 of our, of our, our chapter today, we read... Many of his disciples said, this is a hard te teaching. They grumbled. Who can accept it? They were bewildered. They were offended. They were offended by his teaching. And then in verse 66, we see many of his disciples turned back. They turned away. They could no longer walk with him because his teaching was so hard. In verse 67, Jesus says to the 12, do you also want to go away? Do you also want to leave? And Simon Peter turns around and says, Lord, where could we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe that and know that you are the Holy One of God. Everyone heard the same teaching. Everyone knew the same Jesus. But some people responded very, very differently. Some people left Jesus. They couldn't hack it. Others stayed. So what was the difference? As we hear when we read this part of the gospel, it's not Jesus' teaching that's really so hard to understand. It was just hard to accept. And it's still hard to accept today. People still struggle with this. The exclusivity of the gospel, it's offensive to many, many people. It's offensive that Jesus said that there, he's not simply one way, he's not a way to God, but he is the only way way to God. That's offensive. He says that it is the Spirit who gives life. That we can't do that for ourselves. For many, that's offensive. In, in verse 63, he says that we are helpless to help ourselves. We're helpless. That's offensive. But the Holy Spirit works powerfully through words that Jesus speaks. And his words alone are spirit and life. In the, in the way that they, his words are what awakens us. His words are what feed us. In verse 57, we're told that we need to hunger for and devour his words, his truth. Like a teenager devours a pizza. That's how we need to take in the truth of Jesus. It's not, we can't just pluck at the outside like we're eating Brussels sprouts. We, we need to actually devour this, like we're starving, like it's the, the, most, the, the, the best food we've ever eaten, like our life depends on it. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. People find this offensive. He gave his son for some, for some people. Jesus' teaching is just too much of a challenge. It's too much to take in. He's a threat to our way of life. He's a threat to what we think we know. He's a threat to our grip on reality, to our feeling of being in control. No control freaks in here, is there? No? Okay. He's, a, he's a threat to our freedom for, for the, the, the ad that says, do it for the most important person in the world, you. You know, it's a threat to our, our Western way of living. It's tempting to think that the disciples stayed with Jesus because they were the ones who actually got it. The light went on for them, that, that, uh, that they knew what he was going to achieve. They didn't. They stayed with him because, because they saw something. They had a hunger for something. They had no deeper understanding than the rest of those disciples. 
time and again through the Gospels we see that the, the disciples didn't understand who, he was, who Jesus was, that they misinterpreted his intentions. Like we see that time and again, that they didn't understand his mission. They didn't understand why he was healing people, why he was feeding people, why he was trying to teach the crowds when he was tired. And they certainly were trying to prevent him going to the cross. So what was it? What was the dis- difference? The difference is that they didn't rely on their own understanding and knowledge. They were willing to trust. They were willing to trust God for the things that they didn't understand. They were willing to commit themselves to following Jesus without a full understanding. Now, this wasn't a commitment to a broad set of ideals, though. This was a commitment to a living person, a true and living person, a commitment to abide in him, verse 56. Abiding is to rely, to depend, to be deeply connected with when we abide with someone. They're, They're committing to keep his words. We are, when we commit to follow Jesus, committing to abide in him, to follow him, to keep his words in our hearts and our minds so that they revive us, they renew us, they shape us, they sanctify us, they grow us, they fill us, they form us, and they bring us into a deeper relationship with the true living person of Jesus Christ and make us more Christ-like every day. We're told through the Gospels that Jesus' divine nature allowed him to know the hearts of those around him. So none of this surprised him. Unlike our political leaders today, Jesus is not overwhelmed by the things going on around him. Nothing takes him by surprise. He's not surprised by their lack of commitment. He knew the faith of those followers was not genuine. He sees our hearts. He knew they were only in it for what they could get, the free meal the day before, the physical benefits or the perceived future benefits of of being, you know, some sort of knight at the round table. But he's unshaken. I love this. He's totally unshaken. He's totally calm. And he he looks at the 12 and he says, do you want to go as well? This isn't a whimper of, please stay. I need you to be my friend. You know, there's there's nothing begging about this. This is a challenge. He's confronting them. He's calling them out. He's probing their commitment. He's creating attention. And that's what he does when he calls us, isn't it? That's what he does. He creates a tension. And then in the midst of that tension, Jesus sits with them and allows them to take it all in. And Simon Peter's answer is almost, he's almost perplexed. He says, well, Lord, where could we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe that you are the Holy One of God. This statement, this statement indicates a true saving faith. Not that he's figured it all out. Not that he he understands where Jesus is going, but that they have genuinely put their faith and hope in a future with Jesus as their saviour and king. Friends, this, there comes a point in our lives where we all have to make this decision. And I know many, many of you here already have We have to make a decision in our lives to believe or to be offended. Jesus gives us no third option. There's no third option. He does, and he doesn't ever soften his message. He doesn't change it to make us feel comfortable. Far from it. What he says when it boils down is do you believe him? Do you believe him? Do you believe in him as he's presented in scripture? Do you believe him as is set out in the Bible, in the creeds, and if you're Anglican, in the 39 articles of faith? Do you believe in him? Do you believe that he is the unique son of God, the word made flesh, 
of one being with the Father? Do you believe that he died on a cross as the one true sacrifice, the only true sacrifice for sin, yours and mine? Do you understand that he did this for you personally? That this is personal. Do, do you believe that he rose from the dead, that he defeated death forever? Do you believe that he alone has the words of eternal life? Do you believe that he can transform you? Is this what motivates you? Is this what keeps you going? Is this what encourages you every day? Because today we're, we're baptising Elise. Hannah and Brent are committed followers of Jesus Christ. Then they've decided to raise their beautiful daughter to also be a committed follower of Jesus Christ. And to ensure, to ensure that commitment, they've called on some friends, Britt and Tanya and, and Elizabeth on Zoom, to help them to do this. You guys have got, you've got full, full licence after today to interfere in their life. It's great. <laughs> Soon we're going to hear them express this faith that Jesus is indeed their Lord and Saviour and that they are going to raise her to know the same. It doesn't mean that they don't have doubts and fears. It doesn't mean that they've got it all together. But in the tension, what it means is that they have accepted God's amazing, self-giving love. That they've accepted Jesus into their hearts and that they've made the decision to follow Jesus. And we all need to make sure we've done the same. How do we know that we've done that? Well, that's a question that people go, whether you've been married or not. <laughs> Did you make a commitment? <laughs> it, 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 it's, and then does this show in your choices, in your values, in the way you live your life? Have you been transformed by that commitment? Are you living it out day by day? Friends, John 6 is clear that... that the gospel is hard to accept. It is. The gospel is offensive. It's why so many today turn away. We live in an age that's no, 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 no stranger to scandal, political or otherwise. There's always something on the news. For most of the 12 disciples, the scandal of reliance on the sacrificial death of Jesus, and that was tough for them to take, and it found, but it found them... of this message creates for us and for them the beginning point of a deep abiding faith. But unfortunately so many people today, especially in the West, don't truly share this faith. They're not committed followers of Jesus. I'm guessing that in the, the census that we've just had, it's going to be the first time that Australia has fallen below the 50% threshold of Christian adherence. But we don't get near 50% at church, do we? Any church, anywhere. Okay? Because we're not committed as a nation. Our ideals get in the way. Our pride, our fears, our culture, our self-reliance, they all get in the way. It's all fine on an intellectual level. It's fine on a corporate global level. But we don't like talking about sin personally. We don't. We don't like acknowledging. We, we don't like seeing that we need a saviour. We don't like being dependent on anyone. But the good news of Jesus Christ is that the scandal of our sin is no match for the scandal of God's self-giving love. His love is beyond anything that we could possibly hope for or imagine. The good news of the gospel is that nothing can separate us from God in Jesus Christ, nothing. Once we've made that commitment, nothing can separate us from God. So as Jesus works in our hearts today, as we personalise this gospel, as we recommit ourselves to speak out the creed, we have to all ask ourselves, will we be offended? Or will we truly believe and follow him? I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to pray for us. Heavenly Father, God of grace, we thank you that the word made flesh 
dwelt amongst us, that you sent him to know us, to love us and to set us free. Thank you that Jesus laid down his life for us. Thank you that through him we may have eternal life in his name. Lord, have your word work in the hearts of each and every one of us here that we can truly accept your gospel, our need for a saviour, and truly commit our lives to you. Help us to abide in you, to have a daily need for you, to have a hunger for your word and your truth. Guide us to grow spiritually. Guide us to become more Christ-like every day. Lord, guide our steps, our lives and guard our hearts. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Now we come to some prayers. I have asked a couple of people to, to pray for us this morning. Um, I'm going to start us off and then I'll ask you to come up and pray and um, then we'll finish off at, at the end. So I'll lead us off. Lord and Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we acknowledge that you have promised that through your Son, Jesus Christ, you will hear the prayers we offer and that we ask in your name. Heavenly Father, I thank you for our nation of Australia. I thank you. I thank you for our leaders at all levels of government. Lord, we pray that they will turn to you for wisdom, that they will turn to you for strength. Lord, we pray that they will lead your nation to once again call on your name, that we will once again be a place known as the great Southland of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for transformation in our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'll ask people to come up and pray, please. She's a gift to the Wagstaff family, to the Eldridge family, and to the, all of the um, friends and family, Lord Jesus. She is truly a gift from you, Lord. We just thank you for the joy of family life, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for all the children in this parish, Lord Jesus, and all the families in this parish, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you that through Reverend Jen, we can see that the children are learning to know that they can depend on you and trust in you, Lord Jesus, not to be afraid, Lord, but to trust in you, Lord. We just pray also to the families in the community here, Lord Jesus. We just pray that people can witness to them, that they can really be drawn to you, Lord Jesus, and just thank you that St Luke's remains a shining light in this community, Lord Jesus, and just thank you for the love that you've just poured upon this community and upon these families here, Lord Jesus, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, I just want to start with the words of the song that says, Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. Move of your spirit. Heaven break out. You've done it before. You can do it again. Father, we come before you. We want to lift our world to you. Lord, it's not a surprise to you for the way that it is because you've already told us beforehand to expect these things. But Father, in this we want to pray. We want to pray for your people. We want to pray for those who don't yet know you. We want to pray, Lord, that, that we would see what the prophet Joel spoke of, your Holy Spirit poured out on all people. And Father, from that we especially want to pray for the world leaders. We want to pray, Lord, that the advisors, they would be getting godly advice, Lord that they wouldn't be listening to things of other leaders in other nations. But, Lord, we just want to pray that you would convict. I want to pray, Lord, for those that are making the wrong decisions, for the ones that are, that are treating their people badly. Lord, I pray that you would hold them over the pit of hell, that they would see, Lord, what is their future if they don't repent and come to you. 
Father, we just want to pray that you would just speak to hearts, that you would convict, that you would move. Lord, without you, we can do nothing because you give us the very breath of life. And Father, we pray that you would just move in us, in our congregations, Lord, so that we can be that shining light to this nation and to the nations of the world. Amen. Father God, we take a moment of silence today, Lord. We thank, we take this silence, Lord, to realise the freedom and privilege that we have here in Australia, Lord. As we think about those people under persecution, Lord, in Afghanistan, we just take a moment, Lord, to just thank you. Thank you for our freedom. Thank you for the privilege that we can walk out of our homes and worship you, Lord, and thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for those people at the moment under persecution, those Christians over in Afghanistan, Lord, that are going through trials, Lord, that are being tested by you, Lord, who are not sure where you are, Lord, as they cry your name out. But we pray in your name, Lord, that you will look after them. Lord, we pray protection over them. We pray already the thankfulness of those people who have been able to escape. But Lord, mostly we pray over the Taliban that they just show gentleness in their heart, that they realize, Lord, that you are a greater God. You are a greater God than we can fathom. You have created everything every single piece of this earth, Lord. You have created it in your image, Lord, and we know that this is not of you. So we pray for those people in Afghanistan. We pray for what they are going through now, Lord, but we pray that we take time in our lives, Lord, to realise what we have, to realise the freedom that we have, to realise that we are so blessed by everything. So, Lord, just please take time to put your hand over the nation of Afghanistan. We pray for those people as they're under these devastating trials, Lord. That's something that we can never fathom, Lord, but we pray and take time to thank you for them, Lord, to thank you for every single life, life that is still living, Lord, and life that is now with you. We just take this time, Lord, in your name to put our hands and our hearts over them, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. And Lord, we continue praying. We pray for your church in all places throughout Australia, around the world and here in Emerald. Lord, we thank you for all those who lead your church. We thank you that your word is proclaimed faithfully. We thank you that your word does not return void. Lord, we pray, this is particularly today for our Bishop Peter, ask that you sustain him, that you give him endurance, that he follows you as he always has that he leads as your good shepherd here in this place. Lord, we thank you for all those who have served in this church, past and present. Particularly today, we're praying for Father Tom who joins us and we thank you for his ministry here for many, many years. We thank you for his ministry throughout Australia and England and we thank you for his continuing ministry online now. Lord, we pray for all of those who are in Bible college, who are looking to be leaders of your church in the future. We pray that you sustain them, that you open their hearts, that you teach them their truth and you put a fire in their belly, that they will go out and speak your word faithfully across the nations. We ask all this in Jesus, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I'm going to ask everybody to come up now, the parents and godparents. And Elise, thank you. Baptism, as we said, is the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he had raised from the dead, he commanded his followers to go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we have come today to celebrate that, to obey that command. Baptism with water signifies the cleansing from sin that Jesus' death makes possible and the new life that God gives us through the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the promises of God are visibly signed, an external sign of an inward transformation. It is sealed for us. We're joined to Christ and made members of his body, the church universal. 
So, <laughs> look at her smiling. That is beautiful. We're going to welcome you, Elsie. And we're going to give thanks to God for your life and for your preciousness and for your faithfulness. We're going to ask him for faithfulness for you forever. So, we're going to, now we're going to need to get... Now, excuse me while I do this. Elizabeth, we're going to need you to come up on screen. Colin's going to bring you up on screen now. Okay, beauty. No, that's me. <laughs> All right, so you guys are going to have... Okay. I'm going to turn my back to the congregation very quickly. So, you're going to present Elise for baptism. Is that correct? You've come here to do that? Yes. Okay, will you accept the responsibilities in bringing her for baptism? Yes. And can you hear us up there, Elizabeth? She can't hear us. <laughs> Can you hear us Can now? Can you hear us now? I can hear you. This is going to get awkward. This is going to get awkward. Are you willing to, Are you willing uh, answer, to answer on behalf of Elise? Answer on behalf of Elise. I am. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do her first. I'll do her first. I wonder if I can spotlight that. I can spotlight that. I get Elizabeth, I get you talk. Elizabeth, you talk. Sorry. Can you hear me? Oh, we're just going to have to make her nod wisely, otherwise we're going to be looking at the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Will you accept the responsibilities in bringing Elise for baptism? Yes. yes. By your own prayers and your own example, by your friendship and your love, will you encourage her all the days of her life in her faith in the Christian church? Yes? Ellie, just nod. <laughs> Before God and this congregation, I'm going to ask you now, that you, do you turn to Christ? So I just need to say, I turn to Christ. I turn to Christ. Thank you. Do you repent of your sins? Do you reject selfish living and all that is false and unjust? Yes. Yes, thank you, that will do. Do you renounce Satan and all evil? Yes. yes. Right. Almighty God, deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you into the light of your Christ into his everlasting kingdom. Will each of you, by God's grace, strive to live as a disciple of Christ, loving God with your whole heart and your neighbour as yourself? Yes. yes. So, friends, you've heard these brothers and sisters respond to Christ. Will you help them in this calling? Yes. Thank you. Lovely. Grant, merciful God, that at least may be so buried with Christ in baptism that the new nature will be raised up in her. May the fruit of your spirit grow and flourish in her. Amen. Amen. Give her and her family and sponsors the desire to share with her all that you have revealed in your holy gospel. We thank you for the ministry we have in your world and to each other and in the household of faith. Lord, hasten the day when the whole of creation will be made perfect in your name. All right. Colin, can we get words up on the screen at all as well as Elizabeth? Or no, we need to keep moving. We're up to... no. Keep moving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks that in the beginning of creation, your Holy Spirit moved upon the waters to bring forth light and life. With water you cleanse and replenish the earth. You nourish and sustain all living things. Thanks be to God. We give you thanks that through the waters of the Red Sea you led your people out of slavery into freedom and brought them to the River Jordan to new life in the land of promise. Thanks be to God. 
We give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, for his baptism by John, for his anointing with the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. We give you thanks that through the deep waters of death, Jesus delivered us from our sin and was raised to new life in triumph. Thanks be to God. We give you thanks for the grace of the Holy Spirit who forms us in the likeness of Christ and leads us to proclaim your kingdom. Thanks be to God. And now we give you thanks that you've called at least a new birth in your church through the waters of baptism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pour out your Holy Spirit and sanctify this water so that she, as she's baptized, she may be made one with Christ in his death and resurrection. May at least die to sin rise to new life and continue forever in Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we give you praise and honour in the unity of the Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now I ask all these parents and sponsors to affirm as theirs the faith of the church. Do you believe in God the Father? You'll see. I believe in God the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in God the Son? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, before I go any further, I want to bring Elizabeth back up on the screen if we can. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, I'm going to ask you to speak in a moment. Is this your faith as well? Do you believe in all of this as well? It is. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) All right, now, do you get wet, little girl? Yes. going to get you to hold her over there for me. So maybe. You want to tip her over the other way? Oh, thank you very much. Now, Grandma, do you want to get up for photos? Is there... Right. Right. Elise, I baptise you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Elise, I sign you with the sign of the cross to show that you're marked with, as, as Christ's own forever. Live as a disciple of Christ. Fight the good fight. Finish the race. Go and keep the faith. Confess Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection. Look for his coming in glory. God has brought you out of darkness and into his marvellous I'll give this mummy. Into his marvellous light. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're going to uh, sign some documents now. I think is that my next slide, Colin? So, oh. so at least Jesus has called you to be a member of his church. Friend, we therefore receive and welcome you as a member of his body of Christ, as a child of the one heavenly Father, and as an inheritor of the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, Father Tom wanted to pray for you, so that's what we've got next. So we'll see if we can get Father Tom up. Father Tom, are you there with us? Yes, yes. All right, it is time for you to pray. All right, it is time for you to pray. 
If you would, please, brother. If you would, please, brother. Father God, we just praise and thank you for the joy of being there in Emerald, even though we're there virtually, the joy to be back again after many years. I just feel so much as if we're with them. And so now, as we're one together, I pray, I just give you praise and thanks for your wonderful good news. And I praise you, Lord Jesus, that we can pray for uh, our children and really believe for them that they will be born again into your kingdom today. I'm reminded of a time when four men brought Jesus, uh, brought to Jesus a, a, a paralyzed man. They couldn't get to the roof. It took a lot of effort to make a hole in the roof and bring the, uh, the, the stretcher down. But when Jesus saw their enormous faith, the faith of those who brought that man, that sinful paralytic, to Jesus, when Jesus saw the faith, the Bible says, to the man who was a sinner, your sins are forgiven. And so when Jesus sees the faith of, uh, of Elizabeth, Tanya, and Brent, and Hannah, and Tony, and Phil, all of us, all of us who believe, when Jesus sees all our faith, we know he says to Elise, you are my child, I will never let you go. You, I have given you the free gift of eternal life. We just praise you for the wonderful good news. And when we commit our lives to you and believe in you, believe that you died on the cross to take every sin away. We thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus, that you accept us as your children and with us forever. So well, I just pray that, that Elise is going to have a wonderful Christian life. Growing up to know you, to serve you, and to be a shining light that, that as the light of shone out of Hannah and 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 Diane and all their and and Liz and all their family, so the light of Jesus shines throughout her life. And I just pray, especially for also for um, for Elizabeth Tanya and Britt that they may um, continue to pray every day. For Elise, to see her till she gets confirmed and makes a decision for herself. We just accept her now as uh, as your as your child, and we pray also for um, Hannah and Brent that as they bring up Elise, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them tremendous love, help them to discipline and love her in right in right and proportion so she can grow up to be a wonderful soldier for you in the world. And we pray for Tony and Phil, the grandparents, and, and for uh, Diane and Steve, the other grandparents. We just pray for Jesus that they will continue to lift up Elise and, and, and help encourage her in her faith. We pray for all of us in our church and Emerald and Church, wherever we are. We pray, Lord Jesus, that Together, we will show the world how fantastic Jesus is and all want to follow him forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much, Tom. It's, uh...
which I expect the godparents to read to her all the time. We've, got, we've had that for our children. The cover's fallen off. We've taped it back on several times. So uh, hopefully you will find that to be the same with your family. So if we could have that again, please. Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have bountiful gifts to share. Accept and use the offerings that are given online, are left at the back of the church. Bless and use those, Lord, for the extension of your kingdom here in Emerald and throughout the world. Blessed be God forever. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, making us in your own image. We praise you for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and rising to new life, offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, we lift our voices to praise you, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now, gracious God, we give you thanks for these gifts of bread and wine and pray that we who receive them in fellowship with the Holy Spirit and according to our Saviour's word, in remembrance of his suffering and death, may share in his body and blood. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread and when he'd given you thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in rem- take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We who are many are one body in Christ, for we all share in the one bread. After supper, Jesus took the cup and again giving you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Friends, we eat this bread and drink this cup to proclaim the death of the Lord. We do this until he returns. Come, Lord Jesus. Father, As we recall his saving death and glorious resurrection, may we who share in these gifts 
be renewed by your Holy Spirit and united in the body of your Son. Bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom and there feast at your table and join in your eternal praise. We say together, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. We draw near now with faith to feed on Christ in our hearts with, by faith with thanksgiving. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All greetings. Friends, St Luke's is an open table. If you know and love Jesus in your heart, you are welcome to take communion with us today. I know Tom is taking communion with us afar. Uh, normally we have markings on the floor. I didn't quite have time to put those back today. So please just remain a metre and a half from each other if you can. We have hand sanitizer. If you come and collect either juice or wine uh, from the tray for yourself, I will hand you a piece of communion bread. If you're gluten-free, please let me know. We have gluten-free bread available as well. So I'll, I'll move everything down there and then we're ready.
let's pray. Almighty and eternal God, may we who have now received this holy meal truly know your love in our lives, worship you in all we do, proclaim your light to the world and live in the power of your spirit. Amen. Now a few notices. Uh, we're doing math fuel for Father's Day. Does everyone know who math is? Mission Aviation Fellowship. Mission Aviation Fellowship take the light and love of Jesus into some of the most difficult parts of the world in small planes onto grass strips into mountains and valleys. These guys fly. They take, uh, so Papua New Guinea, they fly into Papua New Guinea from Australia and Arnhem Land from Australia. These guys, um, uh, they, they help all of the other charities take their goods into these hard to reach places as well. So we've got Fuel for Father's Day where you can actually purchase a jerry can full of fuel for Dad for Father's Day. It comes complete with Dad, Dad jokes, okay? <laughs> so um, all that's down the back, I can explain that to you later, but we do have a short clip to show you that goes with that this morning. What do you get if you cross an alligator with a vest, an investigator. Give your dad a jerry can. This. What do you get if you cross an alligator with a with yeah a vest, an investigator? It's terrible. So the jo the jokes are all that bad. Okay, they are all that bad. So uh, what we're doing is we're raising funds for them. We do it every Father's Day. Um, and there's some that kids can colour in and there's big ones and there's little ones. So talk to me about it on the way out if you would like. Uh, other notices, Colin? Okay, Kids Zone is back this Thursday, 4pm till 5pm. That is for primary school age children here on a Thursday. Um, and of course we've got our new Bible study running at 5 o'clock on a Thursday as well. Any other notices, Larry? No, just the Bible study. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a good Bible study. Thumbs up from Donna as well, thank you. All right, moving right on, Colin. The other notice is that we actually have cake. Yeah, okay, lots of cake. Let me, let me pray. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, the honour and glory forever and ever, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And I ask you to stand for our last hymn, How Great Thou Art.
Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. Please cross for a cup of tea. Thank you, everybody. I apologise it was a bit clunky online, but thank you for playing your part. It was wonderful to have you over there. Please, his word. 